So about a month ago, I got this crazy idea that I could make a Rubik's Cube out of soap. So I purchased my Rubik's Cube to get my example and I also found this little fondant cutting tool because I knew I wanted to create an inlaid design. And so I used this to cut the soap and to cut little pieces of soap dough to fit inside those little squares that I cut into my cube. This took a good three weeks to get everything put together the way that I wanted it to. And so now I am going to show you my method and how I put this soap together. I will also be auctioning off the two Rubik's Cube soaps that I made this weekend on my Instagram account if you would like to purchase them. All proceeds are going to go to Be Heartfelt, the organization that ministers to homeless kids in Guam. We are currently doing a soap donation drive for those kids. If you would like to participate, there's more information in the description of this video below. So without further ado, here's how I made my Rubik's Cube soaps. This is my smallest loaf mold. It is exactly three inches wide and it'll fit at least three inches deep, which is perfect. I should get three cubes out of it. And I'm just going to be making a single black soap to put in here for the cube. I have my oils and lye right around 95 degrees or so. And I'm just gonna mix this up. I've got a combination of black mica and black oxide here. My usage rate is half a teaspoon per cup of soap, and that's gonna give me a nice deep black color. The fragrance oil that I'm using is Sugar Plum Fairy from Oregon Trails. It discolors to a dark brown, so this is the perfect time to use it. It smells amazing. So I'm just going to blend this up to a nice medium trace before I pop it in the mold. Color matching soap is definitely not easy. So I have attempted to create colors that are not going to morph. This means that I'm using micas and a touch of neon to help hold the color in place for all of these. The red is a combination of Trial by Fire and Red Lake 30, which Red Lake is a little bit pink, but the Trial by Fire is a little bit orange, so I think it should come out somewhere in the middle. This is a neon green plus a green oxide, and what you see is what you get with the neons and oxides. With most of the green micas, they are going to morph in the soap as soon as it hits that pH, and so it really helps to have a color that will stay stable in the soap as you're making it. Ultramarine blue is the ultimate true blue colorant and it does not morph in the soap, which is fantastic. So those are my colorants. I, the orange and the yellow micas tend to stay more true in ungelled soap, which is what soap dough is. So thankfully that should work pretty well. So I'm making a really small batch of soap dough. It's going to be two and a half ounces of each color, six colors. <laughs> soap dough is one of those things you can just make with your regular recipe and just 
pour it straight into Ziploc bags and then wait a few days and it will be ready to use. So if I knew exactly how much colorant I needed for each of these, I would just pour the soap directly into these cups. But I'm not entirely sure that I measured the correct amount and so I don't want to oversaturate them. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to pour my soap out into more cups and then color them as I go. Okay, the great thing about this is if I don't have all of my colorant completely mixed in, when I squish my soap dough together, it'll all mix in really well. That looks really good. And I've put my Ziploc bags in a cup like this. And then we just want to get all the air out. So I'm gonna put this on the side of my work table and that just helps me squeeze all that air out. And I don't really need, oh see I've got some undissolved colorant in there too. That'll squish into the soap too. So I don't have to worry about that either. Thank goodness. So I want to smash these out a little bit, make sure they stay cool. I'll stick them in the refrigerator so they don't gel. Just until they get set up here. Okay, so now I need to make the crease lines in each of the sides here. And so I'm going to divide the cube into thirds doing the slanted ruler trick because I have no idea how to divide two and a quarter by three. But I do know how to divide three by three. So I'll mark it at two. One. And then I know that these sides are square, so I just have to butt this up against the side here and use my cutter just to create an indent. And I'll do this all the way around and then do it the same. with my second cut.
All right, so now that I have all the lines marked on here, I'm going to use my little fondant tool to make the cuts. Now I can take this looping tool that's used for pottery and start scooping it out so that I can put my colored soap dough in. So the soap dough turned out really well. At least half of it did. I'm really happy with the blue. And of course the white is pretty easy to match. And the yellow turned out really nice too. However, the red, is not quite it. We tried to add some mica to it and now the texture's kind of weird and the color's just not quite right. So I went ahead and remade the red and now look how pretty that is. So much better. And the orange, I ended up adding more to it, but it's still not quite the right color. So I remade that one as well. And now it's sort of bright, but I think it's actually better. And finally, here's how my green turned out. This one's super hard to match. I ended up adding some more mica to that one. It's okay, but I remade that one as well and I like it a lot better. All right, so all the cavities have been scooped out and I am ready to add the soap dough. And my goal is to roll it out and then cut it out with my fondant cutter and place it inside here. I think I'll um, put a little bit of filtered or distilled water in there to help it stick. Okay, I'm gonna start with the blue and get it worked up here. Put some cornstarch on the table. Okay, that's gonna need a little bit of cleanup, but wow, look how cool that looks. We're very fragile here. I've broken off a little piece. Hopefully I can just glue it back in place with the colored blocks and we'll be okay.
I'm going to let it set up overnight and then tomorrow I will polish with a damp microfiber cloth. My next task is to clean these up. They've got a little extra colors, fuzz, whatever's. They're a little bit rough. I've used this tool a little bit last night to help clean them up and now I want to use my microfiber and just rub them smooth and then I will finish using that tool as well. But this just helps get all the extra little pieces off, smooths everything out. Already much better. Now that all the edges are smooth, I need to dig out all of the grooves again. So my plan for that is to use a razor blade to mark them. And then I'm going to use my fondant tool to dig them out. All right, I'm gonna have to clean it up a little bit and do five more sides and then I'll be done. Can you tell which one is real and which two are soap? Of course, if you look close enough, you can tell the difference. This is the real one and these two are soap.